when I was a kid, I went to a carnival and I saw this ride which blew my 10-year-old mind. It was one of those hollow spinning cylinders. Looks a bit like this. And the cylinder is spinning around. So we'll say the front is coming that way and the back is going out that way. And inside, people are pressed up against the wall like that. And when you get in it, you find that you can take your feet off the platform and you just don't fall down to the platform like that. And it's almost like you're being stuck to the wall like that. And it becomes very difficult to lift your head off. And what they end up doing is they can... Oops, no, I want to... They end up tilting it on its side like this. So that when you're at the top, you're actually looking down directly at the ground underneath you like that. And it's all a very strange experience. This is a great ride because it allows you to experience the concepts of circular motion in a fun and exciting way. We're also going to look at a question involving this ride. And this is one of my favorite questions. So the ride, let's say first of all, it's not spinning. It's just sitting there. If you place a person against the wall there, you would expect them to fall directly down like that. But once you start the ride spinning, provided there's a little bit of friction on the wall here, they will stick. And if there's no friction, they'll fall down like that. And that's something that I figured out when I was 10 because I was on this ride with a few delinquent friends who would either spit or take a mouthful of water onto the ride and then in the middle of the ride splatter the water on the wall next to them. And whilst they were stuck there against the wall, the water itself would slowly drip down uh, disgustingly to the bottom of the ride there. So that told me that there is a requirement for some friction to keep you there. If something doesn't have friction keeping it to the wall, it will fall. We're going to answer a few questions about this particular ride involving forces. It's got a radius of three meters, a period of two seconds. So every, every two seconds, uh, the person passes a particular point. It takes two seconds for them to go around one full circle. The person has a mass of 81 kilograms. That's my goal weight. I'm slowly getting there. Take a lot of, it takes a lot of rice to get from 74 to 81. And we're going to figure out these concepts. The centripetal acceleration, the net centripetal force, and then we're going to figure out the required normal force to keep that person sitting there. Centripetal acceleration is one we can do right now, since the formulae only require either the speed and the radius or the radius and the period. We have the radius, radius here and the period here, so let's figure that out. AC is equal to 4 pi squared r on t squared, which is equal to 4 pi squared times 3 over 2 squared. 4 times pi, oops, 4 times pi squared times 3 over 2 squared. That comes to here 29.6088. So we'll say 29.6 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration of this person when, uh, we'll say she is stuck to the wall, spinning around. She is actually accelerating towards the center of that path that she's taking at 29.6 meters per second squared. Since any kind, any time an object is moving in a circle at a constant speed, the acceleration is directed towards the center of the circle in which they're moving. So AC is equal to 29.6. Net FC. Let's do this easily. We know that F equals MA. That's Newton's second law. So the net force is going to equal the acceleration multiplied by 
the mass. So net FC is equal to M81 times 29.6, which is equal to 2398, rounding 2398 newtons. We've progressed to this point in the question without drawing a force diagram. Let's draw a force diagram right now to illustrate for us what we need to work out next. What are the forces acting on this person? She's got some weight, 81 kilograms. The force of gravity is equal to mass times the gravitational constant. G is equal to 10. So that comes to 810 newtons. We also know the net force, which is the sum of the forces, has to point towards the centre of the circle there. So I'll draw that in, an, in a dotted line. There's only one other force acting on this person, and that's the, we'll call it the normal friction force, the, the reactive force of the wall on the person. Can you figure out the direction that the reactive force has to be acting in so that if we add it with this, we'll end up with that? It's actually something like that there. That is the reactive force. Because if you add this force to this force, we'll add them top and tail. You get that, and then we find the red force is the resultant force because that's where we end up if we follow the line, the line there. So the reactive force combined with the, great, uh, with the gravity force gives you that net centripetal force that keeps the person moving in that circle. Let's figure out the magnitude of that reactive force there. First of all, so sorry, instead of figuring out the normal, we'll call it the reactive force. First of all, the person is neither sliding up nor down the ride. So this uh, what do we call it? This element, this component of the reactive force there, because the reactive force can be separated into two forces. This component here has to completely cancel out the gravitational components. So that vertical component is equal to 810. Secondly, this horizontal component of the resistive force is the part of the force which is actually supplying all the centripetal force. This is the part that doesn't get cancelled out, that actually becomes the net force there. So that part there is equal to 2, 3, 9, 8 newtons. Since that's to equal the centripetal force which we found. That imaginary red force is 2, 3, 9, 8. Now we know two sides to this triangle. What can we use to figure out that third side? Of course, it's good old Pythagoras. The magnitude of r squared is equal to 810 squared plus 2398 squared. So r is equal to the square root of those two, which comes to on the calculator the square root of 25. Oops. R is equal to 2, 5, 3, 1 newtons. 2, 5, 3, 1. So when you're in this ride, you will feel the wall pushing you up like that a little bit. It will be push it, you won't move in that direction, but that's certainly the force you'll feel. Your skin will be a little bit tight because it's like if you were to bend a knee against a mat and push that way, the mat would push backwards up like that since you've got two forces going on, the gravity and the driving force. The final thing I want to work out is what is the angle at which that resistive force is acting. And we can say, well, the tan of that angle is equal to the opposite, 2, 3, 9, 8 over the adjacent. So tan negative 1 
2398 divided by a 10 is equal to 71 and theta is equal to 71.3 and sorry you can use tan negative 1 2, 3, 9, 8, divided by 8, 10. That's the, uh, the calculator function to work that out. So the resistive force is actually, actually, I've drawn it here on quite a slant, but it's actually mainly acting in that direction there. If we increase the speed of the ride, so decrease T, T goes down here, the centripetal force goes up, this number goes up here, and we start getting an angle that's closer to 90. So the faster this thing spins, uh, the more you'll feel like you're just being pushed towards the center and not up like that. This kind of angle work is more relevant when we try those, oh, what do you call them, totem tennis questions, uh, which will be in the next video.